so I am using the Innova 3040. And if you watch my previous videos, I've used this on all my vehicles, my Toyota uh, Sienna, my Honda Accord, my F-150, uh, and now the Range Rover. So basically, you plug it in, obviously, and you run this thing, and this is what it came up with, P2402. And it says evaporative emission system, leak detection, pump control, circuit high. Okay, and then there's some three other pages that I can scroll down. So what's nice uh, for me is that I don't have any drivability issues. I can drive, I've been driving on this actually for almost a month and a half, maybe longer, about two months. And I've had no drivability issue. I've had to park for, park for this thing for that long as well. But I've just never had time to actually you know, put the part in because I've got so many projects. It wasn't affecting performance of the car. But anyways, let's go around the back and I'll show you guys how to replace this part. So what you want to do is take the code to the parts department. And those guys are extremely knowledgeable. And say, hey, I've got, a, I've got this P2402 code and it looks like it's my EVAP. Uh, have you guys had this issue or what, do you, what part do you guys give to your mechanics? when they call for this code. Well, let me just show you guys. So that's exactly what I did, uh, just like you know every other time. And this is what they gave me. Let me show you the box. It's right here. And this is part number T5BVB, uh, part number 1609335. And this is a genuine Range Rover part. And this goes for I want to say $225, okay? And it looks just like this. And I'll show you guys under the passenger side fender well where this goes in. It's pretty darn simple. This job is gonna literally gonna take you uh, roughly, I would say half an hour to an hour at the most. The hardest part is gonna be getting this fender, plastic fender well off, which is right there. But, you know, it's not too bad. I wanted to turn the camera around and show you guys exactly where it's located. So, and how to take it apart and how to put this in. And then we're going to take it for a drive um, and see if it turns off. I have a feeling that it's going gonna, it's gonna to need to go through a drive cycle. Which could take up to 50 to 100 miles for me to just drive around town, highway. Uh, and not in cruise control to reset the computer. So that's really what it takes to reset these EVAP, you know, codes on my Jeep. I get this uh, often when I go off-roading and uh, gasoline in the tank is sloshing around. Uh, oftentimes get that EVAP code. But then it goes off, you know, after driving uh, about 20, 30 miles, surprisingly. Okay, so let's turn the camera around. Okay, so do you guys remember the part I showed you, which is that white thing right there? Let me zoom in there. And there's literally just one bolt that uh, it takes to undo all of this and one uh, uh, clamp like a hose clamp so let me show you what that is let's see here let me get a better position <clears throat> if you guys see this round silver thing right here it's an eight millimeter bolt oh, excuse me here I'm trying to get the bolt here I can show you so it's literally just a little eight millimeter bolt that goes right there once that comes out, <clears throat> and when you're working under here, you guys, you, you want to be very careful that you don't mess with these airlines. Just all, all of these, the green and the, the orange, are airlines for your air suspension. Okay, then this is your, uh, you want to be careful of this too. So this mounts to the back of your, your, that plastic fender well. So make sure you guys remove these two uh, plastic screws that just go, bolts onto the back. Uh, this is your, um, your TPMS tire pressure sensor. All right, so back to this. Uh, you just want to undo that bolt, and then this whole thing comes loose. See that? It comes loose. Now, the only thing that's holding it is, now this is the tricky part, because I can't really show you. So the hose clamp is, is right, be, right behind. Gosh, hope you guys can see this. No. Anyway, it's just right behind this, uh, the gas filler hose that comes in from the gas tank it sits right behind there and it takes like a it, it, that's gonna be a little you, you need to finagle this to get this out so that's could be a little pain in the ass but uh but uh we'll we'll see what happens once i pull that off off camera uh, i'll bring it down here and show you guys exactly what i did the best i can okay 
this is what the part looks like after you pull it out. So basically, uh, up on top of the fender well, there are just little plate that's welded to the back of the fender. And this little little hook right here just sits right, right on there. That's what basically holds this together like this. Um, little bar that goes across, plus that one little eight millimeter bolt that goes right there, okay? So, all right, so going back to that, that hose clamp. Now they use these fancy hose clamps. Hope you guys can see this okay. Uh, this one's still intact. So I'm gonna leave this as is, but I'm gonna go grab my other hose, hose clamp because these are really great coming from the manufacturer. These will stay in there and you know, they're low profile, they're really fancy, they're nice, whatever. But I'm gonna toss that, give myself a, just a regular hose clamp and clamp it on there. So once you take this hose clamp off, it's just a matter of grabbing the other end and just kind of twisting it just very so lightly. And it's only in there, I would say uh, about a, just over an inch as far as it goes in, the little plastic hose up there. And you do got a lot of room to work with once you, you know, but you gotta use both hands, okay? So if you can't torque yourself like that, this may not be the job for you. All right, so then rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. Oh, one thing, there is one wire harness that goes right here. Um, I wouldn't recommend taking that wire harness just off yet because the clamp to take this wire harness off sits on the back side, right here. It's just, it just sits on the back side. You gotta push that in really firm, then it'll pull out. But if you just let, keep the, the harness on there, pull this out, you, you can see exactly where that little clamp is. So the last thing you want to do is break that little, that tab that locks the harness in here. There are some aftermarket stuff too, which I haven't been able to really find the exact match. For example, I've checked uh, Napa, um, you know, like Rayleigh's and, and AutoZones. Nobody has this exact part. Uh, they look different, but so I'm not even sure that if it'll fit or not. Fit or not. So just go to Range Rover, get it, because as you guys all know, these Range Rovers are super finicky, and um, they may not do well with aftermarket parts. Okay. So this is just a filter right here, filter cartridge. When you go to the parts place, uh, these are only 29 bucks. I should have just picked one up, but I didn't. But the guy, the the mechanic said, you know. He has never seen a filter go bad, so that's why I opt not to uh, buy the filter. Okay, so to take this thing off, there are two, looks like, looks like zip ties on each side right here. You just squeeze this in. You don't need to squeeze very hard. Squeeze it in, and then you want to slide this down like that. To take off this hose right here to the filter, uh, it's kind of funky. So on the top there, so this thing, whole thing kind of twists like this, okay? On the top, there's a little ridge, little, you can see right there, there's little uh, teeth on the top and little teeth on the bottom. And that's where you need to kind of push that in and then just pull up straight. So like this, so grab each of those teeth. And basically it's like a, uh, it's like an oval shape. When you squeeze it, it makes it round. So watch this. So you, let me see if you can see this. You squeeze right here and you pull up straight. Up. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And we'll put this off to the side because we're gonna reuse it. I wonder if you can rebuild this filter or what's in here. Okay. Now to take off the actual, um, this electronic module. This is a TX20 bit to take off these little screws in the back. So just try to remember how this thing came off so it goes on the same way. Okay, so like this, and, whoop, and like that. Okay, easy. Yeah, you guys, you know, if, if, I can, if I can do this, you guys can do this. It's not really rocket science. It's just a matter of um, not being afraid to do these jobs yourselves because <clears throat> I think most Range Rover, Land Rover owners, especially the older models. I think a lot of us are used to working on our own trucks because the dealers are extremely expensive. They're very proud of their fancy showrooms, their expensive cars. I mean, it, it's a label, it's a brand, you know? So 
it costs a lot of money to keep that brand and that image going. hand tight, really snug hand tight. Okay, and I'm gonna try and reuse this hose, uh, if a hose clamp if I can. If not, I'll end up buying two of these. Okay. Oh, let me just, actually, you know what? Let me just destroy this, because I want to show you guys how to take this off when you're under, when your head is under the fender well. Basically, two screwdrivers. Okay, they're two different size tips. Just take the small screwdriver first, Stick it in here and then just twist it. Uh, twist it, twist it towards if you guys can see the little teeth right there, that's where it bites into. Twist it towards that so you're folding it over. And then grab the bigger screwdriver and work your way in there and and then just work it back and forth. And basically, you're just gonna destroy this thing which is fine. You don't need to be cute about it. Um, grab a smaller one to get under the, under the teeth here. Yeah. And all I'm doing is just trying to release that teeth. There it goes. Okay, and then this thing can fold over. See how it goes, this thing goes all the way around. It holds a good grip on these hoses. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna go get two new two new hoses. All right, so I got my uh, clamps. Uh, these are one and one inch, one and uh, three sixteenths diameter. So that will give me plenty of room to, you know, get it in here and tighten it down. And then now uh, the last thing, the last thing is left here is I'm gonna go ahead and Tighten up the one on the inside. I'm gonna keep this loose. Let's go get our filter uh, put on. So just like the reverse order, you're just gonna put it in here and just snap it in. Ah, there, make sure you guys hear that that click. And slide that in there. That's good. Um, let's get the connector on, and then we'll set it all up in there. Then we'll come back with the camera and show you guys what it looks like afterwards because I can't get the camera up there to show you exactly what I'm doing. But I'll come back and show you what I've done. All right, stay tuned. All right, so here we are under the fender well and I want to share with you guys some of the little tips and tricks to making this job a little easier. Okay, so one is that the hose clamp. Let's see here. So this hose clamp, what makes it really nice is that if you uh, leave the actual, uh, the, you know the end where you tighten it up, the, the bolt or the screwdriver head right there, facing towards inside. Uh, then, if you have a little ratchet, like an eight millimeter ratchet, like this, uh, you can get in there really easy and tighten it down or whatever without any problems. Okay, so that's the key, I think, um, is facing that that side, the head side towards the towards the inside, and then then it's the same one here. The same bolt is the eight millimeter, and that's really it. It's really that simple. All right, guys. So we are up here at Mount Hood Ski Resort area in uh, Oregon, and I wanted to do a quick uh, update Hi. for you guys on. Hi. And I want to do a quick update for you guys on that um, on that evap sensor I put in. Uh, so far, so what I did was I actually cleared the code after I did the job because we were taking off on a long trip and I didn't want to stare at that check engine light. But I want to show you guys um, that. So after doing that, I would have expected for that engine light to come back on within the 100 miles, but it didn't. And, and I've gone over well almost 600 miles on here without any um, issues and that engine code still stayed off. So let me just flip the camera around and show you guys. Okay, so let me turn it on. There you go, see that check engine light turned off. 
Um, no problems here. I've done six. Oh yeah, six hundred and forty-one miles uh, from Sacramento. So that's how long I've gone without the engine light coming on. So I'm gonna assume that this issue is resolved and we are good to go. So I'm glad this resolved. Resolved. Sometimes you just never know because there's just you know several things that could cause that evap engine light to come on. And so, anyways, I got lucky. It worked out. I hope it works for you guys. All right, so if you guys have any questions, uh, please leave me those comments down below. Hope you guys liked the video. And if you did, smash that thumbs up. And if you guys would subscribe to my channel down below, that would be greatly appreciated. Hi. Say thank you. Thank you. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. Mama. Thank you. Bye.